good evening, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here tonight. It's a great honor, and it's a great, great chance to tell you a little bit more about my research. So going back to the words of the provost and the minister, I'm uh, one of the example of the, a graduate, an international graduate in, Italy, in, in uh, Trinity, I'm Italian, uh, who uh, came back to Trinity College as a professor uh, three years ago, after spending six years at the University of Oxford as a lecturer, um, uh, an assistant professor in uh, US dollars, basically. And um, basically, what brought me to Trinity was um, the uh, capabilities that I have in Trinity, the infrastructure that Trinity put in place for me. So how you will see and you will hear from me in the next few minutes, the infrastructure I need in appearance is actually very, very simple, but there is a lot uh, in the background. So um, the, um, all I need actually for my research, as you will see, will be a pencil, a kitchen blender, an inkjet printer, and uh, that's it. Well, I forgot to mention a $7 million microscope that was bought for me, <laughs> but that's beside. So, um, what is my research about? I study energy storage. And, uh, well, why? I'm sure loads of you have read the threatening news from British Petroleum, who announced the last 52 uh, years of oil left. That's all is left. And then, what do we do? Well, we're working very hard to find ways of storing energy, sustainable energy and renewable energy more efficiently. Well, why? Because wind doesn't blow all the time, except in Ireland. <laughs> Sun doesn't, show, doesn't, doesn't shine all the time, especially in Ireland, I can tell you. So we need to find a way of storing this energy when it's available. And uh, at the moment, we're not doing terribly well. The best humankind has managed to do is the most efficient battery that is located in Alaska. It occupies 2,000 square meters of ground, so that's half of uh, an American football pitch, just to give you an idea of how, how large that is, and weights 1,800 tons. So is the weight of, I made the conversion, around 150 Asian elephants. So that's pretty much just to visualize what it is. So we're not doing terribly well, especially when we know that that is capable of releasing 40 megawatts of energy. So that's enough to sustain the electricity needs of about 12,000 people for seven minutes. That's all we can do. So this is a little bit worrying. So what we're doing in Trinity College is trying to find more efficient ways of dealing with this issue. How? Well, with using new materials. Actually, the material I use is the one here uh, behind me, graphene. It comes from one of the most, the, the oldest and most um, um, acknowledged materials in nature, graphite, the one that you have in pencil sleds. So if you take a pencil lead and with scotch tape exfoliate out layer after layer, you end up with a material that is only one atom thick. This material, when it uh, uh, possesses this thickness here, uh, possesses very, very different properties. This is the lightest material known to man, the transparent. It is the strongest material known to man. It's 300 times stronger than steel, conduces electricity better than, than copper. So it changes the properties. Think about graphite that doesn't do much in your pencil lead. And think about graphene when it is only one atom thick. So we're using uh, this material together with many other. Now, the two people who, who discovered this material using scotch tape no won the Nobel Prize in 2010. That's how revolutionary the thing was. But you can imagine going to a big multinational and say, I have a wonderful new material. Now, what you need to do is just employ one million people and put them there with scotch tape and exfoliate no stop. That's not a very good approach. <laughs> so we were working on this uh, during my PhD and eventually um, in 2008 we published a paper on science demonstrating how easily you can obtain about a billion of sheets of this material in liquid in about half an hour. So that was quite revolutionary, and in the last few years, we have been working on upscaling this, and uh, we can now produce millions of millions and millions of graphene sheets in liquid 
in one go. And this method has been commercialized and graphene produced this way is available in the market. We didn't stop there. In fact, um, I was invited to, to write a review for Science Magazine about liquid exfoliation of, uh, of graphene and, um, and other materials. And I counted actually that in nature, there are other 550 at least different types of layered crystals, which like graphite can be exfoliated down to single atomic layers like with graphene. And the nice thing is that when you change the material, you change the atomic species in the material, you will change the properties dramatically. So some of these materials are insulating, some of them conduce electricity like graphene, some other ones will be semiconducting. Now, I have just named the three building blocks of electronics. So you can think about mixing and matching all different types of materials depending on the need, and you have a different device. So what we're doing actually is making inks out of all these materials in the zoo of layered crystals in exfoliated form and making inks that we can use in inkjet printers, exactly like the ones that you have in your office. And what we're doing is we're building batteries which are completely made out of 2D systems which do not contain any harmful or flammable electrolyte, for example, which is one of the reasons why we hear every once in a while uh, of a plane setting on fire or of an iPhone exploding while charging. This is the nasty electrolytes that is inside the battery. So in this case, we wouldn't have any harmful material being in there. And the, the, these batteries are fully assembled only with 2D materials. They are only one millimeter thick and about two centimeters in size. So remember the uh, 150 elephants in Af, uh, an American football pitch? Well, Delivering 40, remember the 40 megawatts of power, 12,000 people, seven minutes. If we were to print these ultra thin, flexible, and transparent batteries by inkjet printing one after the other in series, we would only need a battery that is the size of this room, approximately. It would only weigh a few grams, will deliver an electricity for the same 40 megawatts up to one hour. So we're already doing substantial progress on that. So I, I presented actually at the European, um, in behalf of the European Research Council at the World Economic Forum two years ago, and I heard a lot about what are the grand challenges in the world, what are the, the grand challenges that we are, uh, we are facing. Of course, needed, trying to, to provide potable water, for example, or food supplies for um, the always growing population in the world, energy, of course, storage and harvesting is one key issue. And I hope uh, my research is making an impact on this and will, will allow us to have uh, at least to maintain our needs uh, of electricity demand beyond oil exhaustion. So all this hopefully enabled only by a pencil, a kitchen blender, an inkjet printer, and of course, the 7 million euro microscope. Thank you.